The Pandero is a very special weapon to me, but not for the reason you might think. This was actually the first ribbon I ever got in Warframe. It was new, it was purple, it was sparkly, I felt like I had something really special. So I quickly traded it in for a Dread Riven, because I love the Dread and my friend loved the Pandero. And the rest is nothing but beautiful history. Speaking about history, a lot more secondary weapons have come out since then. And my question remains, can the Pandero still hold its own or not? Hey guys, welcome back, as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this secondary weapon. As per the usual, I got a couple of builds lined up, something cheap, something affordable, something that most players should be able to build, but of course we also have the quote-unquote endgame setup with a crazy ribbon. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player-friendly approach. I like to take my time and explain a lot of the aspects that veteran players should already be accustomed to. So in case you're a vet, and you already know most of this stuff, please... Bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the PUNDURU! Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. The Pandero looks like your basic standard secondary weapon, but it does have a trick up its sleeve. In primary fire mode, this is your basic semi-automatic pistol. And this one kind of mirrors or echoes the Lex Prime. High caliber bullets, but unfortunately a pretty nasty recoil, and the recoil kind of climbs up to the right side, you see that? When it comes to the maximum fire rate that you can achieve in semi-automatic, it looks something like this. And again, if you can control the weapon, you can get most of the bullets to land roughly in your crosshairs. In secondary fire mode, however, the Pandero will unload all the remaining bullets in the magazine in rapid succession. And to make it very plain, it fans the hammer! I'm sorry, I always wanted to say that. It fans the hammer. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll stop. Fans the hammer. Anyway, basically this is how the recoil looks if you don't control it. Once again, it climbs up to the right side. But if you just fight your mouse a little bit, you can get it to basically land all the bullets roughly in the same area. Of course, when it comes to fanning the hammer, I only re recommend this if your target is really nice, close and personal. Now let's have a closer look at stats. Mod capacity is 60 out of 60, and if your Pandero has only 30 out of 30, jump into actions and plug in the Auto King Catalyst, which will be doubling your mod capacity. Now, this is a necessary step, regardless of the weapon, if you want to max it out. The Auto King Catalyst costs 20 plat to install, you can farm one from Nightwave, and you can get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie, and sometimes, just very rarely, it appears on alerts and invasions after dev streams. That's kind of like a special, quote unquote, special reward. Okay. My weapon has been format a total of 7 times. My friends, you do not need to format 7 times. I did this because... It doesn't matter why I did this. I have 7 forma on my Pandero. For the weapon build I'm recommending you guys, free forma will be more than enough. I recommend you forma into V symbols or Madurai. Accuracy for the semi-automatic or primary fire mode is going to be 16, which again, it's pinpoint accurate as long as you can aim decent. And secondary fire mode is 8.2 for obvious reasons. Keep in mind that the stats between primary and secondary fire mode are basically the same, just the trigger kind of differs. So we got critical chance 30% with a whopping 2.8x critical multiplier, which is absolutely fantastic. A fire rate of 3, a magazine of 8, a multi shot of 1, of course 1 bullet by default. Noise alarming, reload of 1 second. Super quick reload. Although the magazine is on the small side. Riven Disposition, 3 out of 5, and if you still don't know what Riven mods are all about, link the cards right now for a full tutorial. Now, 3 out of 5 Riven Dispo is basically right smack in the middle, I still think it's worth getting Rivens for the Pandero, but that's just my two cents on it. Status chance of 10%, and that's a problem. Right now in Warframe, status chance for secondary weapons is extremely important, especially after the whole mainline 2020 changes, simply because secondary weapons don't have something like hunter munitions to rely on, okay? So basically weapons, secondary weapons that only have crit usually are a little bit gimped. Take a look at my Plinks review to understand more. When it comes to the damage types, it's fantastic. Impact Puncture and Slash is the highest amount by a pretty significant margin, but unfortunately my status chance is only 10%. Per bullet, so keep that one in mind. I want to talk about the Weapon Excellus mod slot. Now, in this one, I think it's really worth going with steady hands on the Pandero. So, again, it is worth investing in if you can't control the recoil of the weapon. And with that out of the way, let's jump into a standard build. And we got a whole lot of damage with Hornet Strike, multi shot with Battle Diffusion, Lethal Torrent, Critical Chance, Critical Damage combo between Target Cracker and Pistol Gambit. Yes, of course, my friends, we will be using Prime mods just a tad later. 
We also have 16060 mod pistol pestilence and one steady hands in the weapon excellence mod slot because again with this one on the weapon becomes a whole lot more manageable. From this point onward you really gotta decide what you wanna do with a weapon. I'll just show you a couple of examples and you play whatever you think is best or whatever you enjoy more. First of all let's go with the meta shall we? What is the meta right now my friends? Viral, that is correct. And for Viral, you can go with Frostbite 60, 60 cold mod. Another option is to go with Ice Storm, 40% cold and 40% magazine capacity. Now, this mod is something that I really enjoyed because of the magazine capacity. Give it a spin, see if you like it as well. Now, if I go this route, take a look at my weapon. What's the proc priority? Since the four times IPS, IPS rule is gone in Warframe, the proc priority will be Viral followed by Slash, Impact and Puncture. What about that last slot, man? What should I plug into this one? You do have a couple of options. I can go for a third 60-60, and I would recommend Heat. Heat right now is the most powerful single element in Warframe, okay? Basically, it reduces the enemy's armor, and it also does a decent amount of damage if you manage to stack it up high enough. 28% status chance, though. Not a whole lot. Let's write out the weapon like this, and they make a couple of adjustments here and there. As for our targets, as per the usual, the Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 100. And 20. Shot by shot action, then we're gonna be fanning the hammer. Shot by shot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8. Damn it. Yeah! Not very impressive. Not very impressive, sadly. Let's try fanning the hammer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's harder to get all headshots with fanning the hammer, but Steady Hands does offer you a pretty severe edge, as you can see. It doesn't fly all over the place anymore. My friends, the performance of the weapon right now is pretty mech, to be honest. So let's try to change the build a little bit. Perhaps the build is to blame, and you're half right. Half is the build to blame, and the other half is the weapon simply being, well, a victim of power creep, to be perfectly honest with you. But enough about that. Let's take out Scorch. Let me talk to you about critical chance. If you go with Hydraulic Crossers, this is your option, you are gonna go to 106% critical chance as long as Hydraulic Crossers is up. That means guaranteed crits on all of your shots on your target, and that, from my point of view, is huge. We can also play with more critical damage. Though, here's the thing. If I go with Sharpened Bullets, right, 75 instead of 60, not Prime Mods yet, we'll, we'll talk about Prime Mods later, and Hydraulic Crossers, take a look at these. On headshot, 135% critical chance when aiming, and again, this one, when aiming. The problem is, if I fan the hammer, I don't get these two, okay? So bear that one in mind. It's up to you, really. I think that Hydraulic Crosser is still worth using for semi-automatic, just as long as you understand you are not getting that bonus critical chance as you fan the hammer. So let's test out the weapon like this, and we're gonna make some more changes. More changes, yes, why not? I think this is better from my point of view, showcasing a few build variations and you guys get to choose or you guys get a better idea of what I'm trying to say. Okay, that is fanning the hammer. Right now, I'm not getting that extra crit. You see that? I am getting the buff, all right? But again, only while aiming. And now like this, see the orange crits? I wasn't getting orange crits before. So bear that one in mind. Now the build like this is slightly better from my humble point of view, or mathematically it should be slightly better. Another thing that I can do right now, since I can leverage Vital all that well, corrosive damage will be a tiny bit better in this specific circumstance. So basically if you have a secondary weapon, which has a whole lot of critical chance, but not a whole lot of status chance, you might wanna think about what the element does upon impact with your target. I'm talking about bonus damage specifically. For example, like alloy armor takes 75% more damage from radiation, and how ferrite armor takes 75% more damage from corrosive, so bear that one in mind. Again, when you don't have a whole lot of status chance, it's not really worth thinking about these status effects. But on the other hand, the flip of the coin will be, hey, in that case, why not go with the 90 mods instead? Well, it's still better to go with the 60 mods and get some procs instead of, well, no procs. So, there you go. Now, what I want to do next before switching to Corrosive is showcase this slash. Some players still believe that adding plus IPS to weapons makes a big difference. And on certain weapons, definitely, on certain weapons, plus IPS mods are definitely meta. Not in this case. Now, we're going to be taking off Hydraulic Crossers and we're going to be playing with the weapon just like this, just so you understand exactly what MAME does extra. You will say that MAME will add the 120% slash, which means proc priority number 2 for slash. It's still gonna be proc priority number 2 as it is, but you're gonna get like 2 or maybe 3 slashes more. Allow me to demonstrate the difference between these two builds. First off, we're gonna go with no MAME whatsoever. Same one level, 120 corrupted heavy goons, and we're gonna go shot by shot action, just so you guys can see exactly what kind of damage we got here. 
That was eight shots. Shall I let it tick down? Look, I'll let it tick down. There you go. I even let it tick down. And that was eight plus seven, 15 shots on the target to kill it. And now let's equip Maim and see what happens. Now you want to repeat this test several times to get like a clear baseline, but I think this will be good enough since I can make like a 15 minute video. Maim, more slash. There you go, more slash on the target. A bit more damage as well, just a small amount. But more importantly, the higher uh, proc priority value there. One, two, three. Stand still. Four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, we got eight. Let's let it tick down. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Will you kill it? Will you kill it? I don't think you will. I don't think you'll almost. Oh, you got it. You... No, you didn't. You did. You did. My friends, it's basically the same when it comes to performance. Yes, it will be slightly ever so slightly better with maim. The point is, on most weapons, plus IPS mods are simply not that great of an idea. And on some weapons, they're absolutely meta. Fine, so let's go for the final, quote unquote, final build in this case. Because I'm shooting corrupted heavy goons, I'm gonna be going with corrosive. So goodbye to Frostbite and say hello to Jolt. If you don't have Jolt, you can simply use the 90% mod instead. Unfortunately, Jolt is only brought by Battle Kit here. No, it cannot be farmed from the game. When you see Battle Bring the 60-60 electricity mods, make sure you have a copy of each. The two which are not farmable from the game are Jolt and Voltaic Strike. The melee one and the secondary one, as in this one. As for the option slot, go to whatever you feel is best. I still say that Hydraulic Crossers is a smart idea. And of course, in the Weapon Excellence mod slot, as before, steady hands. What, I can't aim so well, sue me. One more time, Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120, and then we're gonna be switching it up to Prime Mod. That's a magazine, I can let the slash tick down, but I'm not that kind of guy, so as you can see, it's slightly better than before. Well, actually, a whole lot better than before. Especially if you're lucky enough to get a couple of orange crits. I think you have about a 6 point something percent chance at an orange crit with a build such as this. Again, in this case, in this specific circumstance, corrosive will be working better. But if I had a higher status chance on the weapon, battle would have been working better. So keep that one in mind. Finally, my friends, it's time for Prime Mods and a Riven. Now, as per your request, first we're gonna test out with Prime Mods really quick, so we're gonna be dropping Pistol Gambit and Target Cracker, and instead we're gonna go with the Prime versions. I'm not sure I have enough mod capacity to... I do have! Perfect! It's like I planned it. It's like I planned it! 86.1% crit chance. In this case, actually, you might wanna drop Hydraulic Crossers and go with the 60-60 Heat mod. It's actually... It's, it should be slightly. should be slightly better. But let's go like this, just so you can see the difference that Prime Mods can make in Warframe. Wow. You can see from the values, right? You can see from the values the weapon is a bit better than before. Unfortunately, my friends, the Pandero is what I like to call a victim of power creep. A lot of other more powerful secondary weapons have showed up in Warframe, but it doesn't mean that that Pandero can still pack a punch. If this is your favorite secondary weapon in Warframe, by all means, there is plenty to love here. And you can also find the hammer. Finding the hammer, again, will not get me the critical chance of... Um, hydraulic crossers that's why you can't see any orange crits whatsoever right now so this is what you can expect out of the weapon with prime mods but what about ribbons three out of five is still pretty impressive from my point of view and pandero ribbon ribbons are pretty much dirt cheap not good ones unrolled ones i think it's something like 30 plat unrolled this one is a loaner from a friend it is not mine no need to hate on me this one my friends is a pandero sati visicron with critical chance damage multi-shot and minus damage to infested. Now I actually used this one in an infested mission, that is why I still had on it a vital damage. We're gonna go with corrosive as before. My critical chance is 132.8 without hydraulic crossers, 5.9x critical multiplier as before. So let's see what the weapon can do with a pretty nice ribbon. Actually, it's it's hard to get something better than that. I guess you can argue minus IPS, but I am not sure if the weapon can roll minus IPS. It might. And a one, two, three, four shots to kill off a level 120 corrupted heavy goon, my friends. Actually, if you get lucky, you can kill it off in three shots, like Sue. Also got a slash there, so there's that to keep in mind. Take a look at the values of the damage, man. Absolutely freaking hilarious. Yes, the Riven did make one huge difference, my friends. So again, if the Pandero is your favorite secondary weapon in Warframe, and you want to invest into it, you can make it pretty good. Of course, it's not one of the best secondary weapons in Warframe. It can't be, okay? It simply can't. But it still can pack 
one serious punch. And you can also pan the hammer if you so desire. Again, use that one when you're in close proximity to your targets. One more thing which I do want to do, pump up everything with Warframe buffs. And for that we're going to be using the ever so lovely Lady Mirage Prime. Remember when I said that I will eventually like, do I did it, I did it, I did it. Look, Aura Forma on Mirage, yay! And also I added a second Umbro Forma. Don't judge me, I love her. Now, when it comes to Arcanes, we're gonna go with Arcane Precision R5. This one, my friends, on Headshot. Yes, 100% chance for 300% damage to pistols for 18 seconds. And of course, the ever so popular Arcane Avenger. From my point of view, the most powerful offensive Arcane in Warframe on damage, 21% chance for 45% critical chance. Boost bonus added after, so it simply stacks on top of what you already have. Mm. This is a secondary weapon. Oh, wow, this is from the the video, the thing video, the thing. Yeah, I don't like that on Mirage, it's just, no, it just covers up the, all the nice lines and all whatnot. So we're just gonna go El Naturel, like so. A whole lot better, if you ask me. Now, one more time, my friends, Corrupted Heavy, let's go 150. Let's go 150, sure, why the hell not. We're gonna be unpausing the AI so they can hit me and I can get my Arcane Avenger proc. We're gonna be using Mirage's free ability for a fantastic 718% Eclipse buff as well as her ever so lovely clones. And of course, my friends, now I'm gonna be able to one-shot with a pan doodle. You wanna fan the hammer? Why would you even fan the hammer? From my point of view, go for precision shots like you would with the Lex Prime. If you got Warframe buffs of this caliber, you can basically one-shot these high-level targets. And that's definitely no joke. But of course, this is with Mirage Prime and a whole lot of powerful Warframe buffs. Mirage has a problem with staying alive though, so let's turn off invincibility and make this more realistic and all whatnot. Laser is not a realistic dance, laser. That's not the point! Realism, schmillerism, zim, zim. So you can actually stay alive, please don't kill me. Okay, just reload your gun. Wait, yeah, see, that's the problem with weapons which have high reload, my friends. You get killed by the opposition which is me in this case. And as you can see, I was able to survive the level 120 corrupted, 150 corrupted heavy goons. As for conclusions, no, the Pandero is not one of the most powerful secondary weapons in Warframe. I don't think it ever was, in all honesty, but it can still pack a punch, and if you're willing to invest in it enough, you can make it into a full-blown monster like Sue. Let's fan the hammer in this case, because I'm scared. Please don't kill me, please don't kill me, please don't kill me. I'm not invulnerable anymore. As always, my name is Malazar, thank you guys so much for watching, like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below if you guys want to suggest any particular type of content. And if you want to become a member, click the join button next to the sub button to learn more. I'll catch you guys in the next one.